All right, in homework 1.3, we're doing two things. We're dealing with limit laws, and we're dealing with infinite limits. Um, with the limit laws, they work exactly as you would expect them to work. And so a lot of times you can just see the answer without actually doing the limit laws. I am going to very strongly urge you not to just jump to the answer and instead to practice using the limit laws because this is kind of like a test run for when we do derivative laws and the derivative laws are not gonna work out the way you would expect them to. And so you really need to be able to apply the laws and this is the time to practice it. So I'm gonna go over a couple of these and make sure uh, we understand how they work. The first thing is we have the limit, and I'm gonna do B here, number one B. We have the limit as X approaches three of X squared F of X plus six G of X. And we wanna fundamentally break this down using limit laws. And the first thing I, can, I notice is that this is one giant thing plus another giant thing. The entire expression can be written as a sum of two things, two terms. And we can use a limit law that says the limit uh, as X approaches A of F of X plus G of X is the limit as X approaches A of F of X plus the limit as X approaches A of G of X. Uh, which is 6g of x in this case. Okay. Uh, and now we can break down each one of these even more. Now we have the limit of a product. We have This one is x squared times f of x. This is 6 times g of x. And we have another rule. Uh, the rule, the product rule, works exactly like you would expect it to. And it says if you have the limit of 2 uh, a product, we can split it into the limit of the first factor times the limit of the second factor, we're gonna add it to the limit as x approaches, I don't know why I said a there, limit as x approaches three of six times limit as x approaches three of g of x. And now we can actually evaluate these limits. This we can do with direct substitution. We can just plug in three and we will get nine, three squared is nine times, Limit as x approaches three of f of x is seven. So nine times seven plus limit as x approaches three of six. This is the limit of a constant, which is a constant. It just stays that value. Times the limit as x approaches three of g of x is negative one half. And you'll notice that I broke it up until I got to just this limit that we already knew. We knew that the limit as x approaches three of f of x was seven, and this was the first time we had just f of x by itself before f of x was being multiplied by x squared. Um, g of x was being multiplied by six, and so I really broke it down. Now this is 63 minus three, which is the whole thing equals 60. Okay, cool. Um, D, uh, g of x, the limit as x approaches three of g of x over f of x minus seven. So this is the limit. We can split this into a quotient. This is the limit as x approaches three. Uh, the whole thing can be split into g of x divided by f of x minus 7. And the limit property says if you have the limit of a quotient, it's the limit of the numerator divided by the limit of the denominator. And I think for a lot of kids, they're like, well, that didn't actually change anything. Well, yeah, it did, because now we've got just the limit of g of x, which we know how to do. And I'm going to split the denominator even more. Again, uh, if you were just trying to get the answer, uh, you could do this in your head and it would work out exactly like you would think it would work. I guess I should put x approaches three here. Of f of x minus limit as x approaches three of seven. And now we can use our limit properties. Um, the limit as x approaches three of g of, uh, g of x, I don't know why I put a three there, it's hard to talk and write at the same time, is negative one half. And the denominator goes to uh, seven minus seven, which is zero. When we have a limit where the numerator is not zero and the denominator is zero, we know that that is a uh, uh, non-existent limit. Uh, so we say that the limit does not exist, okay? Um, this limit does not exist. And if it were, if we had more information, like if we knew that uh, this was approaching from the right side or the left side or something like that, and we could see if it's a positive or a negative value. We might want to see could we um, could we get whether it's positive or negative in infinity and be more precise. But for this, we can only do does not exist. 
All right, we'll do one more because this one involves more algebra. And, and this time, I'm going to skip a bunch of steps because we know that we'll be able to break this into the limit of the top over the limit of the bottom. We can break the top up into the limit of x squared minus uh, 4 times the limit of g of x. And we can do each of those individually. So we're going to get a squared minus 4 times g of a, which is 4 over a plus 4. Uh, a doesn't go into anything. x is the only thing we're putting in. So we're, we're doing direct substitution here. So we get a squared minus 16 over a plus 4. And this can be simplified. Um, this is the difference of two squares. We want to recognize that immediately. And we can cancel out, and the answer is a minus 4. So that's nice. It's a nice answer. Um, okay, I think we can do one more of these. Limit as x approaches 3, we've got these two things uh, adding. Here, I think it's very helpful to use the limit properties and split it. It's sine of x minus 3 over x minus 3 plus limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. And this is a special limit. When you get sine of 0 over 0, when the limit goes to sine of 0 over 0, um, that's a limit you are supposed to know. That limit goes to 1. This limit is the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x, and that's 7, so the whole thing comes out to be 8. The only reason I want to go over i really quickly is that this one is different. This is the limit as x approaches 3 from the right. It's very similar to the one we did over here in d. But this time, when we do the direct substitution, we get 10 times uh, as x approaches 3 from the right. Because the limit as x approaches 3 is negative 1 half, that tells us the limit as x approaches 3 from the left is negative 1 half, and the limit as x approaches 3 from the right is negative 1 half. And so this had to be negative 1 half, even though it's only from the right side, we know that the overall limit. Um, and here we get... Uh, as we approach from the right, we get 3 minus 3, and we get uh, negative 2 over 0. Now, this is, this is one of those infinite limits where it's something over 0. And so this is an undefined value, uh, and we know that the limit will not exist. But this time, we know it's as x approaches 3 from the right. And so we can think a little bit more deeply about it. Uh, this is going to be negative 2 on top, even when it comes from the right. But on the bottom, it matters whether this is going to be a negative 0 or a positive 0. And because it's coming from the right, we're getting like 3.0001 minus 3, which is a positive value. As x goes to 3 from the right, the bottom is going to the 0, but it's what I like to call... 0 plus. It's a positive number as you get closer and closer to 0. And so we have a negative divided by a positive, and that's going to be a negative. And we can go a little bit deeper than just saying it does not exist, which is true. This limit does not exist. But we can say that the limit goes to negative infinity because we had a positive over a negative. All right, a couple other tricky ones I want to um, show you guys in case you had trouble. The limit as x goes to negative 1 of 2 times f of x plus 7. This is the limit as x goes to negative 1 of 2 times the limit as x goes to negative 1 of f of x plus the limit as x goes to negative 1 up 2. This one is a constant. So we get oh, it's 7. I don't know why I put 2 there. This is a constant times the limit as x goes to negative 1 is from both the right and the left. And as x goes to negative 1, the, the right side goes to 5. The left side goes to negative 3. And so this limit does not exist, um, and this one goes to 7. If we have 2 times something that does not exist plus 7, the entire limit does not exist, and we're done. I want you to compare that to this next one. This is the limit as x goes to negative 1 of x plus 1 times f of x. Let's be very careful about the properties we use here. So we're going to split up the limit. And now we get... 0 times does not exist. And this should uh, give you pause here. If we have 0 times something that does not exist, maybe it doesn't exist, but 0 times anything is 0. So we have these two rules coming into conflict if, if, with each other. If we try to multiply a number times something that doesn't exist, it shouldn't exist. But if we multiply anything times 0, it should be 0. And so we're going to be very, we're going to be even more careful here. And we're going to use the definition of a limit. We're going to say this, we're going to try to do it from both the left and the right. When we run into trouble on a limit, we can always go back to what's the limit from the left. 
and the limit from the left will get zero times, uh, I, I guess this is x plus one times f of x. And we're also gonna end up doing the limit as x goes to negative one from the right side of x plus one times f of x. And as x goes to negative one, we'll get zero times, as we're going from the left side, the f of x limit is going to negative three. And zero times negative three is zero. As we're going from the right side, this is still zero, and f of x goes to five. We can see why the limit as, as x went to negative one of f of x didn't exist. But zero times five is also zero. And so the limit from the left goes to zero, and the limit from the right goes to zero. And since both, both the limit from the left and the limit from the right goes to zero, the overall limit goes to zero. So we want to do All right, um, I'm going to do just two on the back. The first one is the limit as t goes to negative one half of one half uh, of f of t, where f of t is this piecewise function. And so let's read what this piecewise function says. f of t is this quadratic function as long as t isn't one half. And when t is one half, negative one half, the uh, function value is three. So we, this is f, this is f of negative one half. At negative one half, the y value is three. But everywhere except for negative one half, the y value is this quadratic. And so we end up with this quadratic everywhere except for negative one half. We know the y value there, but this is from both sides we're gonna get this, we're gonna be using this quadratic. And so to do this limit, all we have to do is use this part because the limit is what happens when you get really close, not what happens when you're actually there. So the limit from the left is this one, and the limit from the right is also this one because this is uh, what the function is as long as t is not equal to negative one half, which is both sides. So we get negative one half squared minus negative one half minus three-fourths, and so we've got to be a little careful. We're squaring a negative, a half times a half is a fourth. Here we're subtracting a negative, which is adding, and we've got three-fourths. One-fourth minus three-fourths is negative two-fourths, which is negative one-half, and negative one-half plus one-half is zero. Um, number 10, this is a little bit different. We also, we again, we're going to negative one, but this time just from the left side, and we're using this piecewise function. And this piecewise function says, um, to the left of negative one, we use this function, and to the right of negative one, we use this function. Well, we're going to negative one, but we're going from the left side, so we're gonna be using this. Negative one, uh, sorry, negative, we're gonna plug in negative one here, minus three, and that's negative two, and that's our answer, because we are doing the limit just from the left side. If this had been the overall limit, if this had not had this negative sign here, we would have had to do it from both the left and the right and seen if they were equal to each other. And if they were not, uh, the limit would not exist. Okay, hopefully that helps on your homework.